it's back in the shop again. Not for repairs though this time. We've got something a little better for it. So in this box of goodies right here is the 8030s old Easy Guide system. So this is the Easy Guide 500 monitor. Now we don't have the terrain controller nor do we have the steering motor and we're not going to because this is not going to have auto steer on it. So the purpose of not selling this and keeping it and actually installing it on something else such as this tractor is whenever I do custom brush hogging or other custom work it's easy for me to show how many acres are covered and if I'm spreading fertilizer or doing something else for someone or even mowing I know how many acres I actually covered even though it's not going to got it's not going to steer me I can still stay within those lines relatively easily not going to be as perfect as auto steer this is actually going to be installed but easily removed because I want to be able to use it on the gleaner and five combine we have as well for fescue seed harvest the benefit for me being able to monitor on fescue seed how many acres I'm covering is I have a record of okay well this year I made say 200 pounds an acre well you know last year I only made 150 so what did I change or what did I do that made it better or was it just the weather so kind of helps me for record keeping it also helps me to forecast what my potential income is going to be on the next year yes I know that you can go on a map and say, okay, well, this is a 25 acre hay field. However, like my hay field is a perfect example. On a map, that hay field acres is showing 24.3 acres. But in reality, I actually only cover because the pond and there's a wet area behind the pond I don't cover. And then there's a little stream that goes through there that I don't, I, I'm not going to mow it because it's not worth the risk for the maybe extra bale that I'm going to gain. It's actually a 20.7 acre hay field is what I'm really covering. So again, that's why it's important because dividing, you know, let's say 2,400 pounds of seed across 24 acres versus 20 acres is going to change my average yield per acre. And because there's not really a whole lot of options here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mount it on this right hand fender. I thought about mounting it in front of me and I'm not 100% undecided. You know, it's possible I might. I also mount, might mount it right here in front of me to the right because there's already holes there and it would cover them. So let me do some playing around and we'll get it figured out. All right, pretty good progress was made. You can see we've got the screens turning on right now. We've got all of our wiring ran. I, uh, I did decide to put tape across these magnets before I put it on the hood. And that's just in hopes to keep it from scratching it up. And just like that, it's on there. Solid, it's not running around anywhere. So ideally, I think that this needs to be right there. It's not blocked by my steering wheel. It's easy to see. It's not in the way when I get up and down. All the wires are out of the way. And I'll show you why it's not there yet. So the reason that it's not mounted yet is because I want to reuse this. I'm going to cover this hole with the ram mount. And uh, unfortunately, I cannot do that in the current situation. And that's because the ram mount I got right there is too short. It's only about three inches long. So I ordered one. It should be here Saturday. And it'll be six inches long and it'll be more than enough for and it's got a ball on each end where I, whereas this one's got the flat mount with the hex button on it so the ball right there will bring it out farther plus the ram itself is longer plus it's got the ball on the other end that's actually already on my uh, monitor there so it should put it right here and that's exactly what i'm looking for well, and just like that our ram mount that we actually need is here what I'm trying to do is just kind of get where I want this to be, which I think is right about there. And there we go. Now we have absolutely no satellite signal, which is to be expected mainly because we're inside the building like we talked about and yes i've changed clothes and everything it's a couple days later like we talked about ordering that this is exactly what i want now what i am going to do is on the back side i'm going to do some stuff to tidy up my my wires now i agree the remote is 100 percent unnecessary i could really just reach up there and, and do it that way however i honestly like the fact that it's there and it is in my opinion safer because the chances of me putting my arm through here is high because it's short or short way to get to it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this loop with all this extra wire and I'll use that to just hang this on my remotes or something. 
and then it'll be out of my way. And so this all makes sense, right? This is my power cable. It comes down here and I just drew power right off the starter. I unplug it right here. Or if I wanted to get real crafty with it, I could just pull this fuse. Either one would work just fine. Up here, this end is all taped up because if or when I were to add auto or uh, easy steer motor and guidance, this has to go as an output for um, the terrain controller. So that's why it's all taped up because I want to ensure that nothing gets in there. And then last but not least, all goes up here. Now in this loop un underneath of it, because I couldn't find a, you know, I only really needed a three foot cord, but they really don't make any of those for the GPS cables. So this one's like 20 feet long, but it's all right. Cause it's going to work out well for the combine because I can make it longer, shorter, whatever I need for that application. And then of course our actual GPS antenna is right there with some tape on the bottom to keep or help protect the paint on the tractor. And then this is what I was talking about where the twist ties at, because if I choose to move where this intersects at, it's pretty easy to do. I'm pretty happy with that. All right. So if I put the camera up here where my head would actually be, you can see I got a clear view of that. I know it's going to be a little more difficult to see on the screen just because it's not going to be like real life, but I can see everything clearly read all of it easily. And if I really needed to, I could reach it. Look over here. My remote's right there. Well, my remote's actually not going to stay there. My remote is actually going to ride right back here and kind of be out of the way. So this is basically going to be a holder and I can still engage and disengage things as needed. All right. Yep. Just checking. Yep. So it'll let me engage it and disengage it. The, uh, the other nice part is, I don't know how well you can see it on here. Well, actually, you can see it on the camera. So this remote's lit. So in the, in the, even in the nighttime, like if I'm doing something, <coughs> it's pretty easy for me to be able to reach over here and, and use this. Yeah, we're just going through here and getting everything set up. Uh, the last thing we were set up for was fertilizer. Okay. Okay. We will want to record a boundary, but we're not gonna do that right now. Thingy. All right, just like that, we'll be ready to go. You're probably not gonna be able to see it, but we're finally got, we're starting to get some signal. We're gonna let this run for a minute and let it get it uh, get it kind of situated. All right, just like that, you can see right here in this corner, we've got full signal. We are good to go and have guidance. So we don't have auto steer on this. We have guidance capabilities now. We'll go test it out. All right, so we're out here using the uh, GPS guidance. No different than what we've done before, actually. And we've actually used this before to rotary hill this field. However, we're making a new boundary and everything. Because I want you to kind of all see and understand the process and what we do in order to use it. So we're making a boundary right now. And the purpose of that boundary is just to give us an idea of how big this field is to give us some data for that and that's important for a few other things such as spreading fertilizer or if you're charging and say you're doing custom work and you're charging by the acre. All right so we're about to finish and complete this boundary. There we go. That. Stop the boundary. Yes. Stop the boundary. There we go. So now this will give me information about how big the field is. That has something else in it. I'm not sure how to delete it. It should be roughly about an acre and a half feet. This does have some information in it from when we use it as 80-30. We're with the 80-30, so I think what it just did is it added to something else where I was in the wrong field. Not a big deal. But ultimately, that's what we're doing. If you're curious about why we rotary hoe pasture, just look on our channel. There's a video about it, and it'll actually break it down far more in depth, and it'll really help you understand why we do it, especially where we're located. Now, as mentioned before, this is, our, this is not auto steer. This is just simply GPS guidance that shows how close we are to where we, you know, our last pass that we had. I'm gonna attempt to hold this as still as I can. So you can see right there at the very top of the screen, there's three dots, right? Sometimes it's three green dots, sometimes it's a green dot, two red dots, vice versa. That's telling me where I need to move to. 
So like right now, if you look at the top left of the screen, it's showing me how many feet or inches I'm off. Now you don't have to follow the dots either. So like you can see right here, I'm just trying to mirror being next to where I left off before. You get all kinds of options, but it's helpful to see where you went, especially if you can't tell from the track you're seeing. Just so you can see here, I zoomed in so you can see where I'm missing and overlapping a little easier. All right, just like that, we are done with that field. So we're gonna say yes. And we're gonna move on to the next field. Now the next one is actually going to be not necessarily nearby, so we're going to have to actually go in there and find that one by name. Yes, we still rotary hoe most of our hay ground. I'm not going to say we do all of it. And we still do most of the pastures. Again, not all of them. I did think you all would enjoy seeing what the new hay field looks like. Now there are some spots, kind of like this, that are thin, and we will probably have to reseed a little bit, but not much. This right here is actually where we shot both of our deer. Chrissy shot one right here, and I shot one over here too. Like I said, most of it, it turned out pretty well. It's still, again, there are some spots that are thin. I'll show you a few of them as we get closer. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the, the knowledge that was shared and uh, maybe you can find your own setup or make something that works for you that'll work out for your operation. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a blessed week. We'll see you next time.